I am Dr. Apelle Sequens, analysis specialist in Britain and the director of the Bell Clinic in Surrey and the Airedale Allied Centre in Yorkshire. Today my talk aims to share some information with fellow professionals who may wish to seek ways to help people with severe allergies or intolerances. The question I'm aiming to address is what happens when your patient, through a trial and error process, finds their diet becoming too restricted and seems to react to most foods he or she eats. This has become a growing problem over the last two decades because apart from the case of gluten, medicine has been oblivious to the role of non-allergic food hypersensitivities in many chronic conditions. In my view, this is one of the most undiagnosed causes of ill health around the world. Many people who consulted me back in the 90s used to sort out their health by identifying a small number of foods as reactive, avoiding them and eating everything else, and they were fine. Nowadays, most people whom I see in my clinics have done the Candida diet, have done the GAPS diet, have done the low GIM diet, the FODMAPS diet, the Paleo diet, and so on, and still continue having health issues regardless. I would not go in detail of the possible reasons for this, but suffice to say that current or past gut infections, long-term use of medicines, which are prescribed to calm down the symptoms but not the inflammation, and metal or chemical load are all known to contribute to, or indeed cause, a disturbed gut ecology and changes in the human biome. In all these situations, I encourage my patients to gain a total control of their diet, eat organically, eat a great variety, rotate their foods, and eat as little as possible. When all other measures, all forms of avoidance, all naturopathic remedies have failed, the last resort to an allergist is methods of immunotherapy or desensitization. They are synonymous words and they mean uh, they refer to measures which aim to switch off an allergy or intolerance, thereby reducing the burden of the immune system and those precious T helper cells, the T lymphocytes, which act as our guardians against external agents and including foods. It isn't surprising that 80% of our immune system is in the intestine because the intestine is a vast area and it receives a very large quantity of foods and fluids every year. It's estimated that the amount is about 700 to 1000 litres for an average adult per annum. The low dose immunotherapy, also known as neutralization or endpoint titration, and the enzyme potentiated desensitization or low dose antigen in the United States. Both have been supported by numerous placebo controlled trials published in medical journals. Both are unconventional because food intolerance has only recently started becoming a diagnostic option in medical textbooks and for doctors. Both are generic because they are easy to copy as they are not copyrighted. Both are precluded from being openly marketed or advertised by current regulations which mainly protect licensed medicines. Both are fundamentally different to conventional immunotherapies which are quite effective in the treatment of some simple inhalant allergies such as allergy to dust mites or allergy to pollens. To start with, the low dose immunotherapy or LDI is harmless because it deploys very low doses of foods or inhalant allergens. The concentrations vary between 50 times weaker than the normal foods we eat to several thousand times weaker. It is highly tailor-made for each person. It relies on detailed intradermal tests, that is, tiny painless injections are placed in the dermis, the top layer of the skin, aiming to identify one of a series of dilutions of, say, potato, egg, milk, or indeed dust mites or pollens, which switches off previous reactions to stronger concentrations. 
This is called the neutralizing dose. The same dose which is expected to prevent one's symptoms when this particular food or inhalant is uh, contacted, is used. In this way, a large number of foods can be tested by a skilled nurse or a doctor to work out the neutralizing doses. The treatment consists of sublingual drops or safe, painless, self-administered injections and is expected to work within two to six weeks. Most people find that this method works like an antidote. You benefit while you use it. In other words, it's not a cure or something to reverse the tendency for reactions long term. A small percentage experience a long-term remission after continuous use for two or three years, which is almost like a cure. By contrast, the enzyme potentiated desensitization, or EPD, is a totally non-customized method. The laboratories which produce it mix together infinitesimal dilutions of several common and uncommon foods urban allergens or chemicals in different concentrations in a way covering all sorts of possibilities. In each cocktail, each substance is present as a fraction of a milliliter. From one millionth of a mil, the strongest, that is mainly for airborne allergens, to one hundred trillionth of a mil, the weakest concentration, which is mainly for foods and treatment of uh, food-related uh, reactivities. It is precisely this extremely high dilution of the EPD that makes it so safe. After hundreds of thousands of patients treated, there has never been a single severe allergic reaction. It is the addition of an enzyme, the beta-glucuronidase, which activates this otherwise useless cocktail of allergens. The enzyme is acting as a lymphokine, a substance with properties of an immune transporter. This substance is used to carry the allergens from the injection site to the nearest lymph nodes, thereby introducing them to the T cells and reprograms them to recognize these allergens as friendly rather than hostile. So they no longer need to react against those uh, substances. Both of these methods of immunotherapy, the enzyme potentiated method and the low dose immunotherapy are used in the prevention and treatment of severe food allergies or intolerances as well as inhalant allergies and reactivities of the immune system to a wide range of environmental chemicals. Both of these methods of immunotherapy require a high level of expertise and a knowledge of their strengths and their limitations in order to maximize their efficacy. More information on the enzyme potentiated method can be found in Wikipedia with extensive references, whilst information on the low dose method is available in clinics which specialize in it.